Shalom. Welcome to the Messianic Hour with Rabbi Scott Sekulow. The Messianic Hour is a program designed to give you insight into the Jewish roots of your faith. Rabbi Scott is also here to answer your questions and help you gain a deeper understanding of Bible prophecy. And now, here's your host, Rabbi Scott Sekulow. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Messianic Hour. I'm your host, Rabbi Scott. The show is dedicated to reaching the lost and educating the found. I'm here with my wife, Judy, as we share from a Jewish and Gentile perspective how we see our Messiah in our faith. And we're glad you're with us today. If you're listening uh, via the radio in one of the 75-plus stations that we're on, or on the Internet via the iPads or your Droids or your Apple products, if you're watching us through GodTube, YouTube, Vimeo, uh, all those different ways to watch us, even Cross TV, we're glad you're with us. And check out our website at RabbiScott.com. There you can sign up for our free newsletter or email letter. Uh, and also you'll receive a free book, I Have a Friend Who's Jewish to You, and a prophecy card just for signing up. It's our way of saying thank you. Let us know where you're listening to us from as we're literally heard around the world. And we're glad you're with us today. And Judy, we have a great show in store for you. Tell me a little bit about what's coming up. Well, we're still in Genesis, is it, what, 27 through 32? Pretty much, yeah. Something like that. I'm going off the top of my Genesis head. Genesis 28. Which is always a scary thing when I do that. Um, one thing I have gotten a little used to is going a little more on the fly, which you never have a problem with, but I like my notes. I like my organization. I'm pretty fly for a rabbi. Oh, I knew that was coming. <laughs> Why did I give you that opening? Sorry, guys. Didn't mean to. Um, so we're going to be talking about angels and wells. That's right. And how they point to our Messiah. And then the second half of the show, we're talking about a very special event that should be shown in eight cities right now across the U.S. Atlanta is one of them. It's coming up on Saturday, April 6th and the 13th. It's called the Miracle of Israel. And you're not going to want to miss this. This is an unbelievable documentary about the miracles, four major miracles of Israel and how they point towards the Messiah. This is narrated by no other than, for all you Star Trek fans out there, Leonard Nimoy. Well, it you'd is watch a, it just for that. I would. It I wouldn't mean, even matter what the subject that's matter right. was. He you and your brother. about anything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> as Leonard long as Nimoy, he's on there, that's, that's it. Right. It doesn't matter. From uh, Star Trek, Mr. Spock, also known as a very much a Orthodox uh, Jewish man and a great, great uh, ability to share the miracle of Israel. So we're going to talk about that in the second half of the show. Judy, you know, we're just like seven, eight weeks away from also going to Israel. Please don't remind me. There's just too much to happen between now and then. We're so excited. We have. Yes, we are, but there's a lot going on. <laughs> we have a lot. But people have, if like this week, next week, if they want to go, they better get their information in. That's right. We got a great, it's going to be a smaller group, uh, but a great group is going uh, this week, this time. We have from three different states. Georgia, New Jersey, and I think Wyoming. We're taking them all across the country. Wow. So uh, it's very exciting. We'll have a lot of accents going on. That's true. <laughs> so if you want to, and plus our guide who is a uh, Frenchman, Frenchman uh, Louis. So you can check that out. Again, RabbiScott.com for more information. Stay tuned when we get back. We're going to be looking at the story of Jacob's Ladder. We're going to be focusing on the angels and the wells. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Messianic Hour. I'm Judy Seculo, and I'm so glad that you're watching, listening to us today. We're continuing our journey in Genesis 28 through chapter chapter 28 through chapter 32, and we're kind of to the point now. We we talked about the ladder and what all that meant, but now we're actually going to be focusing on angels and wells today. That's so, right, and how they both point to Messiah. And it, you know, it's really interesting because. In Judaism, we don't talk a lot about the angels. The no, angels they're really were, not that much in the Torah. They're just mentioned. Men, they're just kind of mentioned as angels, but not a whole lot of information. Right, not a whole lot of information. You don't, uh, you know, vaguely one or two names, but just they're kind of there. And but in the renewed covenant, we have a a, a much broader picture of their role and what they play, and we're going to see how they work with our Messiah. And so it's very interesting how they all come together. Well, in the Brit Hadashah, we're actually 
given some, were actually introduced to the names of certain certain angels. But they also, we see that there's certain characteristics right. that they have. There's about six characteristics. And the first one is that angels are organized. You see this in Jude verse 9, Daniel 10, 13, Ephesians 3, 3 10. Which, hey, that's up my alley. I like organization. I was going to say, that, uh, that means I'm probably not going to be an angel. <laughs> no, you missed out on that one. They also have personality. See, well, there, there you I go. That's yes. A, that's my angel. Yes. They have intelligence. <laughs> there uh, I go. Ah, uh, yes. It's getting deep, guys. First Peter one twelve. They show emotion, Luke 2.13. And they have will, Jude chapter 6. That fits you, too. Angels also cannot reproduce, Mark 12.25. They don't die, Luke twenty thirty six, and they serve both believers and believers and non believers and non believers. Thank you. Hebrews one one fourteen, First Timothy five twenty one, Acts twenty seven twenty three through twenty four, just to name a few verses. And we also know that they have ministered to Messiah, and we actually see the first incident of the angel was Gabriel, right. who is the one who predicted Messiah's birth in Luke 1, 26 through 33. And Judy, you know, too, it's very interesting because angels were actually something not just new, only for the Jewish community. The Canaanites actually believed in angels that went between their gods. So this idea of angels in the Middle East uh, and Middle East religions were not a new concept. Mm -hmm. They were there already, and we see that. So I think it's important to realize that as we are focusing in is while they don't play a major role up front or you know in the Torah, we definitely see them in there, and there was a norm in the culture of the time as well. Well, and we had about four instances of angels just in Messiah's short birth, early right. childhood, Gabriel, who announced his, ver his birth, the... You know, the group of angels who announced it to the shepherds out in exactly. Bethlehem. Then you had the the kind of choir of angels um, at his birth. And then about two years later, you have the angel who appeared to Joseph and said, you need to flee the baby. The, right. the child is in danger. And we don't know if that is the same angel or a different angel because it's not, they're not, that particular one's not named. It could have been Gabriel. Mm -hmm. As well, but we see how that comes in. We know that uh, Has Hasatan, Satan, is an angel. A fallen angel. A fallen angel. That's and right. he's supposed to be one of the archangels, just like um, Gabriel. And there's another four that are mentioned through the scriptures and some of the outside writings as well. So we see there's about four incidences that's recorded, that's connected with his childhood. But we also know that they continue to minister to Messiah even during his adult years. We know that right. after he had his 40 days in the wilderness and the temptation by the enemy, that a group of angels ministered to and him. strengthened right. him in that. And that you, that's found in Matthew like 4.11. And then also in Luke Twenty two forty three. It says, as he was facing, you know, his greatest challenge, his greatest um, ordeal, the crucifixion, that angels came and strengthened him also, so that he could face the trial and the and the crucifixion that was coming. And then, as we all really know, because we're we're, we're in that spring season, right. that they were intimately involved with Messiah's resurrection. Right. We know that they rolled the stone away. We know that they told the women who were coming to, you know, um, anoint Messiah's body because they thought he was still dead right. with the herbs. And we also know we just celebrated Passover, an angel of death went through the land. Mm -hmm. So angels play a multiple role in all this uh in all these different ways. And we see that they play a, they played a big role in Jacob's life here with the stairway, um, but they also played an important role in Yeshua's life, and they were both fulfilling this eternal plan of right. Adonai. And, you know, God uses the angels to protect his children, his flock, and to keep and to keep the enemy at bay, and you know we we people you always people say uh, you know I have a an angel watching over me, and and we literally can't have angels that protect us. That's what they're there for to 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 protect us, to guide us, uh, and to lead us. And then the next thing that we were going to talk about is the wells of water, and this is really interesting. Um, I think you know it, this isn't something that's necessarily so spelled out in scripture. But as we were studying and preparing, it was, it was really interesting. But we, we see that 
Well, it, you also you see what the living waters that it's a representation of of God, and and so we see this in the scripture. But we're really going to d- d- dig a little deeper, no pun intended, and really go into understanding the difference between living water and what we maybe call dead water and how that relates. Well, and we see that we kind of start with the story of that Abraham was digging wells. You know, the Philistines stopped them up. Jacob opened them back up. And we know that the story that a well played a big part in the story of finding a wife for Isaac. Yep. Um, You know, so why is that kind of detail thrown in. And then also Jacob, he found his wife, could even be at the same well, we, we don't know. Right. Um, you know, the the meeting was a little different. The details about the well were in there. So why why was all of this these meetings at wells, so to speak, important? Right. And, and we have to understand a well is, is a area of still water. They dig down. But then you have living waters, those waters that are underground that keep flowing. And we really see that's how our Messiah is. And that's how what the mikvahs or the water immersion, what's commonly in Christianity today called a baptism, their mikvahs, Jewish mikvahs, water immersions, and traditionally they're done in moving water, in living water, because the water getting the oxygen uh, kills off things in the body. It really makes you, it's a purifying uh, a way of cleansing our spirit and and body. Well, it just kind of shows that these wells mentioned kind of represents a source of purity. You know, th- these are men meeting their wives. Their wives are, you know, maidens here. Right. And kind of fruitfulness. And we see that the prophet Jeremiah goes so far as to use it as part of the image of the divinity himself. In Jeremiah 2.13, it says, They have forsaken me, the source of living waters, to hew out for themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. And those are considered uh, cisterns, are considered dead water because it's not moving where we see that. So that's that connection between living and the dead waters. That's why he calls himself the living waters at uh, the feast of um, Sukkot, uh, uh, Shavuot. No, the living Sukkot. water. Sukkot. I you're right. You're right the it's first time. Go with your gut. Um, but, and that's, but, and as part of the immersion process for a mikvah or a baptism, um, you know, it's a, you're not physically cleaning yourself. It's kind of a symbolic spiritual way of, of expressing a spiritual purity right. to come clean with one that has been immersed. And, and when we go to Israel, we'll actually not only do mikvahs in the Jordan, but we also go to um, the Qumran uh, where there's an example of a great mikvah. I love going there to the to seeing it and to be able to experience it as you go in yourself. Another thing to note, Judy, too, is that Yeshua stopped at Jacob's well uh, in Shechem, as where we read in uh, John in John chapter four, and this is where the woman gives him the the the, the drink, and she he then uses this to explain that he is the living waters. Coming from what? Dead water. Because the well would be considered dead water, but yet he is that living water that flows from within inside of us. And again, it's it's just really interesting because he's showing, you know, here's a, a purification process. And again, when during Sukkot, like you said, in John seven thirty seven through 39, he says, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. So Messiah is saying he is that source of living water exactly. and the very hope of Israel himself. He is the purification and he brings it all together. Hope you enjoyed that. We're going to be looking more at the scripture next week as we go through the Torah portions and seeing our Messiah within the Torah. It's a great way of really understanding the scripture. I want to encourage you to join us again. Sign up for our newsletter at rabbiscott.com. If you want to go to the trip to Israel and be in those living waters, join us June 3rd through the 13th right there on the website. Get more information, but you got to get your information in very soon. The dates are closing fast. When we get back, we're going to be talking about the miracle of Israel. You're not going to want to miss this. It's debuting in six cities, seven cities across the U.S. We'll give you those cities and times when we come back.
Welcome back to the Messianic Hour. I'm your host, Rabbi Scott. This show is dedicated to reaching the lost and educating the found. I'm here with my wife, Judy, as we share our faith from a Jewish perspective, as we come from both Jewish and Gentile backgrounds. And we want to encourage you, go to the website, rabbiscott.com. While you're there, you can sign up for our newsletter. We see the free book, I Have a Friend Who's Jewish to You. You'll be able to get uh, emails about, which, which will have our shows on it. Also, while you're there, you can bless the ministry. We are a listener-supported ministry. We want to encourage you to donate right there online. Also, you can bless Israel by planting a tree in Israel. What a great way to uh, be able to bless the land by us blessing it with a tree, planting a tree in Israel. You get a beautiful uh, certificate that you can put up on the wall, suitable for framing. So check that out at rabbiscott.com. Why we have you here, though, I really want to encourage you. We have a major event coming up. A good friend of mine, Jonathan Burnish with Jewish Voice Ministries, has this has been a project that's been three years in the making. It's called the Miracle of Israel, and it's it's a great. Judy, why don't you tell me a little bit about this? It's it's really a great opportunity. Well, it's a one hour documentary, and for anybody who really knows the history of Israel, they know that the only reason this tiny dot over there, basically, right. if you look at satellite view, this tiny dot has survived all of these years is because of. I don't know. He has kept his people. He's kept his promises to his people. And the miracle of, of Israel tells the story of this nation and the history of the world that has maintained a national a national identity, sometimes without a homeland. Right. You know, sometimes the homeland was taken over. And it this it explores four ancient prophecies. Um, in light of modern events. And these are the establishment of the state of Israel in 1948, the regathering of the lost Jewish tribes to the right. homeland, the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem, and claims of the coming of the Jewish Messiah. Yeah, Judy, you and I have been a part of the Jewish people coming back to Israel as we've been, we worked with Jonathan for several years, ministering overseas and reaching in both Russia, the former Soviet Union, uh, in Argentina, South America, India, India, Ethiopia, bringing the Jewish people back to Israel. And this is a phenomenal series and it's hosted by Leonard Nimoy. It is, and I, I, you know, you've already said that, honey. I, I, just, okay. I want to say it again. Okay. I love that. Um, it is such a great video. I've, I've gotten to watch it several times uh, because uh, we got to preview it a, a few months ago, and then uh, we've been able to watch it, and it is really amazing. The quality of this is just phenomenal, and how it's done, and it's really out there to reach the unsaved, both Jew and Gentile, and so we really want to encourage you at your churches, at your work, let people know, tweet it, email it, we're going to be sending it out. In a blast this week, you can, you can send it to your friends. But here's a list of the cities. Judy and I are going to read them off to you um, so you'll know where you are. So Atlanta, right here in Atlanta, Georgia, April 6th and the 13th. Channel 11, it's NBC at 7 p.m. So it's April 6th and the, April 13th. It's coming up sat, Saturday and the following Saturday, 7 to 8 p.m. Channel 11. Judy, the next one. Baltimore, Maryland, on the 13th and the 15th of April. The 13th is at 6.30 p.m. The 15th is at 12.30 a.m. And, and that is on ABC Channel 2. Right, and also in that same city, April 20th and 27th at 8 p.m., they're doing it on WNUV Channel uh, uh, CW54. And then tell them about Dallas. Dallas, Texas, April 6th. Five, and these are, okay, Dallas, Texas is all on ABC Channel 8. It's April 6th at 5 p.m., April 13th at 11.35 p.m., and April 14th at 3 p.m. And l- just real quick, the they times that website. we're telling, we'll have it on the website, but the times that we're telling you are the times for that city. So, for, for example, um, Dallas is Central Time. Right. Miami, Florida, for all you Miami people out there, April 6th. Uh, at 7 p.m. on ABC Channel 10. All these are on ABC at that station. April 7th at 1.30 a.m. April 13th at 7 p.m. 
April 14th, 1.30 a.m. Of course, if you have a DVR, you can uh, put it on there as well. And again, we do have all these dates and times on the website. Phoenix, Arizona. This is, oh, well, they changed it up here. Uh, April 13th is 7 p.m. on CBS 5. April 14th is 7 p.m. on 3TV. If you're in the Phoenix area, I guess that means something to you. April 16th, 1 a.m. on CBS 5, and April 21st at 9 a.m. on CBS 5. And in Tampa, Florida, April 5th, 8 p.m. on My TV, April 6th at 7 p.m. on ABC, also on April 7th at 10 a.m., and then April 11th at 8 p.m. back on My TV. And then and West, West Palm. Palm Beach, Florida, April 13th at 8 p.m., April 14th at 11 a.m., and April 14th again at 11.30 p.m., and that's on CBS 12. Now, people might be asking why these cities, why not where they're at? This is the initial launch. These are major uh, cities with Jewish populations, in it. and that's really what this is out to reach, the unsaved Jewish person and Gentile. They'll be offered a free book at the end of the event, and there'll be follow-up by the local Messianic congregations. So we really want to encourage you to let your friends know it's a great teaching. You're going to love it as a believer. You're going to just flip over this video and this teaching. So check that out. Again, uh, in Atlanta, it's the it's the 6th, we're, the day we're, we're uh, airing on uh, WNIV. It's going to be at 7 o'clock tonight. Next Saturday, April 6th, also 7 p.m. It's on NBC Channel 11. Set your DVRs. You're really going to watch this. But let the people in your churches know about this. This is a great event. Uh, Jonathan, again, has been working on this for over three years. They have some of the people that we have had at our congregation. Gershon Solomon, who is part of the Temple Institute, he's involved. Uh, the others from the Temple Institute will be on there. Uh, we have they have members of former Palestinians uh, from the PLO are on in this video. Great footage from the Holocaust and from the rebirth of Israel. It gives you the history, Judy. I didn't know this, but you know one of the ideas was to give the land. Uh, to give Alaska to is- as the, the land for Israel. And, Somebody didn't read their Bible. Well, actually, they were. You need a what? You haven't seen the video yet. No, I haven't. But actually, the first governor of Alaska was a Jewish man, and he. They were very pro-Israel. Okay, that's very good. But, but, but and if you remember, <laughs> we went to a city, and remember, we went to a church there, and it has a Jewish star in the middle. Uh, in in the in their stained glass. Okay. And they in actually, Alaska. In Alaska, we, went there? Where we yes, was that? when uh, in the one with start with an S. I can't remember the name of it. Skagaway. Skagaway. Thank you. And it shows the um, they had originally had a artist do this um, piece of glass up, and it was supposed to be a dove in the middle, but somehow there was a mix up, and he ended up putting in a star of David, and the church kept it. So there really is a very strong. Uh, outreach, but you, you're going to learn about that, and it's just a great, great teaching. I couldn't imagine your people in Alaska. It's a little, imagine, you a guys cold. are kind of middle, uh, yeah, middle we, Eastern. It's a little cold. But there. it was a nice gesture. So it was a nice thought. Yes, but you know, the, the tour is very clear about where the Jewish homeland is supposed to be. <laughs> yes, and it's not in the middle of cold areas. <laughs> it's not areas. in Alaska, no. We, no. But it's a great opportunity, great video. You're going to learn a lot in it. Again, we want we really wanted you to 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 watch this, be a part of it. You're really going to be blessed. I like I said, I've gotten to see it several times. And Judy, did I mention Leonard Nimoy is is no? I this. really don't think you've mentioned that at <laughs> all. I don't think you've mentioned that. Who is narrating this? Leonard Nimoy. Wow. Yeah, and and where so, is he from? He, what what did he play? He played. Did he play somebody? Well, he was a guy, of course, in Star Trek. Mr. Oh, Spock. is that it? But that he was. also did the show. In search of, and that's kind of how this theme goes with. So, if you all you in search of fans out there who love that way in which they did it, that is kind of the format in which this takes. Again, you can watch it April sixth, April thirteenth in, in Atlanta. It's gonna be in Atlanta, Baltimore, um, Dallas, Miami, Miami Phoenix. Phoenix, Tampa, and West Palm. Go to our website rabbiscott.com. Click on the Miracle of Israel. It'll take you to their page for more information. Check it out. It'll be a great resource. Tell your friends. Tell your neighbors. 
Tell your enemies. That's how good this one is. Until next, and and remember, we are a listener supported show. So sign up for our newsletter at rabbiscott.com for more information. Until next week, this is Rabbi Scott and Judy saying shalom and pray for the peace of Jerusalem. <laughs>